Hello, so for many years I have heard that 300mm 2.8 lens is the sharpest lens of most of the lineups for different brands of cameras and I've been dreaming to get one. Today I'm very excited that I will be unboxing the Sony 300 2.8 and I'm gonna also talk a little bit about how it compares with 7200 2.8 in the handling, if you're on the fence of deciding whether you want to get the 300 2.8, 402.8, or the 600 f4, I'm gonna also share a few ideas. And I'll also share with you how do you pack for your trips. For example, if you have an African safari coming up, how are you gonna fit all this in and which one to, to pick? So yeah, so let's do it. Okay, here it is. Let me just make sure that I can handle it here so yeah the box is just incredibly light for a while i even i wonder if there's anything inside i still don't know so let's see okay wow so there's a strap right here and there's a whole stack of instructions that i never read there's two straps here i think one is for the lens and one is for the tripod collar but anyways i'm gonna put it here put it there and then how do i here it is. You can see it oh, right here. Okay, just take it out. Cow, it's just incredibly light. So, all right. So let me put this in on the ground. Here it is. So it's a very interesting looking bag. <laughs> it's like those little tents. And okay. Ta -da! Here it is. So this, this is the 300 2.8, the lens that I've been dreaming for so many years. Oh God. Wow. It is uh, really light. So I had a uh, client before who I met and she rented a 300 2.8, the Canon one. That was the uh, old style, older style one that was as heavy as the 400 2.8, but this one is light ray. So anyway, so let's open the cover. Okay. Okay, we found this. So this is it. This is the lens. Ah, okay. So the control, okay. Have AF manual full AF MF full time EMF. What does that mean? I don't know. They are focusing distance, image stabilization, mode one, two, and three. Everything is pretty much the same as the 402.8. Okay, so let me just put this in. Oops, to uh, protect the front elements. And okay, so the size is still a decent size, as you can. So let me quickly compare this with the 70 to 200 okay so here so this one is the 7200 2.8 sony so let me just do a quick comparison with the hoods on okay so this is this is the 7200 and this is the 302.8 so as you can see uh, is quite a big difference in sizes. In terms of the length, let me see, okay. So if we are not counting the hood, if we are not counting the hood, so this is it. So yeah, so the 300 is substantially bigger. So let me see about the weight. So I actually brought my uh, scale. I brought my scale in here. 302.8 is 1700. Is it 1751.75? Four, one seven five four, and seven two hundred is one three one two. So they are only about four hundred gram difference. God, that's impressive. That is amazing. We're talking about a lens that used to be super heavy. So this one, obviously, the seventy two hundred is still a lot lighter, but this one is just amazingly light. One of my students was asking me whether it would be good to carry this one to just hike. And this is actually exactly one of the main reasons a lot of uh, photographers are getting this one because with a 2.8, even when you add a 2x teleconverter, it's going to be 605.6. So it's still relatively fast, probably not in super low light, but for 
like action photography with a relatively light 600 that's gonna be a game changer and also another thing is sometimes when you want to do lower angle photography this one would be a lot easier than like the 400 2.8 but in terms of the size so let me just do another comparison without the hood so that it is uh, easier for you to see the difference i hope that i don't drop the lens though because <laughs> without the hood then uh, scratch the front element okay so this is it so this is the difference of the uh, two, two lenses not that different right the next question is how does it compare with the 400 2.8 right so let's this is the the 400 2.8 right here so this is the 300 hold it properly <laughs> it's getting heavy so this is this is the size okay yeah the 400 is bigger of course but oh sorry <laughs> no wonder i was like how come they are so close in in size so one is without the hood so that's why Okay, so this is, uh, if you can see clearly, it's uh, significantly smaller, the 300, 2.8, and also the weight. God, the weight also, it feels a lot lighter on the, so it's uh, 20, 20, 2800, 28, 2900. This one is about 1500 without the hood, 1559. 155095 or something so almost half the, of the weight that is uh, pretty incredible that is pretty incredible so a lot lighter and how about the size of the so also uh, hold on one second this one so this is the 600 f4 which i probably will sell Sometimes later, well, actually no, because uh, if I have to go to places like Snow Leopard and those, then I still might need the four six hundred. This is one is without with the hood. Let me again move the hood for you to see clearly the size difference. So I just hope that I don't drop the thing. So this is six hundred, and this is three hundred. So with a two x teleconverter. It's gonna be a lot smaller. So what it really means is, before people would be like, "Oh, these uh, prime lenses, they are so heavy, and I can never hike with them." But all of a sudden, right now, if you have a zoom lens like a 100 to 500 Canon or the uh, Nikon 200 to 500, which I had, it's very heavy actually, probably comparable or even heavier than this prime lens, which is unimaginable just a few years ago. Now the weight might not be a problem anymore but lenses are still super expensive right like the 300 2.8 is like six thousand something and the other ones are like 10 grand but the thing is a few years back i bought a 500 f uh, for five thousand dollars at the time these lenses are a lot more expensive these days but i used it for a few years and then the, the japanese yen was rising or whatever so after i used it for a few years i actually sold the lens use price at more than five thousand dollars i actually make a few hundred bucks <laughs> but uh, using a prime lens for a few years all the time these prime lenses retain values really well and of course you, you might say that the zoom lens retains value really well too but then considering both of them retains value really well would you rather spend five years with a 2.8 sharp lenses fast autofocus really good image quality versus one that is mediocre then when you sell it in a few years or when you want to exchange for something else you can basically get I, I wouldn't say that you can sell it at a higher price like me in that case that is more like a special case but at least 90 percent of the price it will retain so it's almost like a no-brainer if you can afford it it's not like you go to a fancy meal and then you eat it and that's it right if i were to pack it that is the problem now what i used to do is if i go to like a tanzania or, or kenya safari or, or alaska i would bring a 400 2.8 and a 7200 2.8 and maybe a 2470 2.8 just three lenses and maybe two or three bodies right for africa i probably would bring three bodies because the animals can be super close and pretty far and uh, there's no time to change the camera and lenses and also it can be a lot of dust so you want to 
make sure that you have uh, three bodies so that the dust doesn't come in if you change lenses. And to Alaska, I would bring maybe two bodies. So now the problem is, do you replace this one with the 402.8? Some of my friends told me that they do not bring the 402.8. Instead, they bring the 600. So they have a 600, they have a 302.8, and then they have the 7200 and those two. And so that works. And I think that may be actually a great idea uh, because I think 400 is, is almost perfect. But like if the animals are really far away, you want to use a 600 and sometimes you still have to crop. But then from 600 range to 300, actually they can come very fast. So a lot of the time, 300 actually gives you some advantage when they're coming fast. And then when they're co coming really close, then you switch to 7200. And that would still be good. But then you know, what I was told is that a lot of the airlines now checking the weight of the carry-ons too. Getting the 600 and the 300 and the 7200 can still be quite heavy. So I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be. I'm definitely going to give this lens a try. Maybe go to some local places to photograph some birds and now let you guys know how it is. But another thing is that like you may ask, like, Tinman, why are you so obsessed with the 2.8? The Sony 200 to 600, uh, 6.3, you have all the focal length flexibility. So why do you need that? And these days, the ISO performance of the cameras are so good anyways. Uh, ISO 10,000, almost no noise, right? Why do you care so much about the the 2.8. The thing is, especially for bird and wildlife, a lot of them are active in pre-dawn and after dusk. After dusk. <laughs> so the light is really low. And during those times, of course, you can still use your eye tracking and high ISO and the image quality is still going to be good. But the thing is, physics is physics, right? When you have a 2.8 lens, the, the maximum aperture is so big that it allows more light into the camera. It's almost like when you're trying to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and it's dark and you're using the little lights coming from the window to guide you and it's very easy that you hit yourself into the, the table or something, right? But with more light, it's a lot easier to walk, right? So this is exactly the same for 2.8. So during those times when it's critical, you want to get these amazing behavior shots in those low lights, this one opens up a whole new world. You probably get another... 15 to 30 minutes of very fast autofocus. If, if the autofocus is lacking, then even if the photos is sharp, but then with the error in the autofocus, the time it takes to lock onto the focus, the animals might have already been gone. So that's why people spend so much money on just having one extra stop of light. And yeah, so that that is why this 2.8 lens, to me, you can basically buy time, right? Uh, if you think about if gold or time is more important, now with these lenses, you're buying some extra time that is not possible to take photos. So that is like a no-brainer. And with the weight now, I, I just can't even imagine the possibilities of moving quickly to find out a good angle to get the shots. So yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, definitely check out this video where I talk about some of the goods and bads about zoom lenses and I have a very important concept in there that would hopefully change your photography. So definitely check it out and I'll see you next time.